Hello everyone, welcome back to Salesforce Predator. In this channel, we discuss about various concepts and technologies in Salesforce. This video is part of Salesforce integration series where we are learning about different areas of integration as well as preparing for integration architecture exam. In today's video, we learn about JSON and XML. So while working with integration, we often need to send data from one system to another. So JSON and XML are two widely used format for exchanging data between different systems. In today's video, we'll see what is JSON. We'll see syntax for creating JSON. We'll also learn about XML and syntax for creating XML data. We'll compare JSON and XML on certain points. Further, we'll also see areas where we can use JSON and areas where XML is preferable. Okay. JSON stands for JavaScript object notification and it is used for storing and exchanging data from client to server or from one system to another system. Okay, so in case of integration also, let's say if I want to send data from one system to another, I'll be using JSON format for that. Okay, JSON is a subset of JavaScript language and it is derived from JavaScript objects. So if you are familiar with JavaScript and if you have worked with JavaScript object, so it will be easy for you to understand JSON. Okay. Next we have JSON syntax. A JSON object is a key value data format wrapped in a curly braces where keys are usually strings and values can be a string, number, boolean, null, array or even another JSON object. Okay. And these key value pairs, they are separated by commas. Okay. So let's say here we have key one value one and then we have comma as a separator and then next key value pair, right? Also square brackets are used to hold arrays in JSON object. Okay. So if you can see a simplest JSON example, this is one where we have a key as name and value as Pankaj. And then we have a comma as a separator and another key value pair where we have age as a key and value as 28. Okay. Note that this entire content is wrapped inside curly braces. This opening curly brace indicates start of JSON and this closing curly brace indicates end of a JSON. Okay. Let's look into more complex example. Let's try to understand this by breaking it down. So if you see this data, this is nothing but a data for a person record. Okay. So if you see this is a start of a JSON, right? And here we have end of a JSON, okay? Which indicates this closing curly brace, right? Now you can see this is a key value pair, right? Where name is a key and this Pankaj is a value, okay? Now note that this key value pair, these are separated by commas. Okay. So this comma act as a separator for key value pairs, right? Now, if you look into this address key and its value more closely, you will understand that it is also having a JSON object as a value. Okay. So at, for address key, we have another JSON object as a value, which is having these key value pairs inside it, right? So we have already seen a key can have a null, a string, uh, it can even have arrays and object as a value in JSON, right? Another one, if you want to notice, you can see this square brackets. We have already seen square bracket indicates array in JSON, right? So this indicates array, right? And if you look inside this array, you will find two sets of JSON objects, right? So this is nothing but array of JSON objects, correct? So we have details like name, age of a person, then we have address, we have its phone numbers, and there are two types of phone numbers, right? We have uh, a home phone number, we have an office number, right? So this is how you can interpret a JSON record or a JSON data, okay? Next we have XML. So XML is nothing but extensible markup language, which is used for storing and transporting data again, right? 
uh, and we need to transfer data from client to server or from one system to another so we can use xml also instead of json okay and xml is an older format as compared to json and there are some legacy systems which are still using xml okay next we have syntax for xml xml uses a tree like structure to represent data with elements as nodes in tree and attributes as their branches and these elements they have start tag they have an end tag and there is a data in between that those tags okay we'll also look into elements these attributes namespaces processing instructions and comments uh, in an xml data okay so let's understand this with the help of an example okay so this is a similar example which we used for json okay so similar data is being represented over here in form of a xml so let's understand this by breaking it down again this is a similar data which we represented earlier in a json format okay so if you look into the tags more closely you can see name you can see age we have address and we have phone numbers right so this first line in the xml data this is nothing but an instruction to the processor okay so this is processing instructions for the parsers okay to 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 understand what version we are using to understand what is the encoding right so all these things are used by parser for parsing the xml data okay this is the first tag in an xml okay this is nothing but a root tag so if you see this is an opening root tag and you will find a corresponding closing root tag over here okay you can name it uh, something else also right now i have just named it as root okay and this is again an optional parameter in a root tag okay and this specify namespace for this xml data okay so this is nothing but namespace namespace is important if there is a possibility of mixing two xml documents okay so in xml developers usually define the name of elements okay so if we have two xml document there is possibility of duplicate names of elements present there okay so to avoid the conflicts we can use XM, xml ns attribute which specify the namespace okay this is a root node right next we have some child nodes like name we have age we have addresses so these are nothing but child nodes of root okay again we have pankaj as a value between these name nodes right and this is again considered as a node only okay so the value is also considered as node the nodes which have opening and closing tags for example this name and age so these are considered as elements okay to add a comment inside an xml data we can use this syntax okay so this is how we can add comment in an xml right now we have this address child node right uh, of this root node this address node is also having some child nodes for example street city state okay now uh, you can see this type specified over here right so this type is nothing but an attribute okay So uh, this attribute specify this phone number is of type home, okay? And here you can see uh, this attribute specify this phone number is of type office, okay? If you re represent this data in form of a tree, it will look like this, okay? So here we will have a root element, right? And then we will have name node we'll have this age node right so these are some child nodes okay and then we'll have child node of this address node as well right correct so that is how we represent an xml data okay next we have a comparison between json and xml so we'll use all these points to compare json and xml okay 
So if you talk about ease of use, JSON has more compact structure and is easier to read and write than XML, right? If you talk about size, JSON is usually smaller in size than XML. As in XML, you need to have elements, you need to have opening tags, closing tag, you have attributes and a lot more, right? So we have already seen that in previous examples. So JSON has more verbosity as well, right? Now, if you talk about speed, JSON has a straightforward syntax, which is easier for computer to parse, right? So it's a smaller in size, which reduces the amount of data to be transmitted and even processed, right? So it will lead to more faster performance. Whereas uh, in case of XML, right, due to its larger size and complex structure, and you can say more verbosity as well, some DOM libraries takes more time to parse it as they have to build the you can say uh, in-memory representation of a XML document which they are parsing, right? So that's why it takes more time for uh, parsing of XML. Uh, and uh, there are some high-performing JSON libraries available for various programming languages, which makes a big difference also, okay? If you talk about popularity, of course, JSON is widely popular used format in modern web applications, right? It is better supported in different different programming languages also. In case of legacy systems, since XML is way older than JSON, many legacy systems are still using XML as a data format. Okay, for example, in case of banking industries, right? It is uh, it it may be a cost effective to continue using XML rather than uh, you know converting in and using a new format for storing and transporting data there. Okay. Next, we have a data integrity. Now, XML helps in maintaining the data integrity through use of a schema or document definitions, okay? So in XML, we have a schema also, and a schema defines the structure of XML document, and it also specifies some rules for the data it can contains. For example, what elements are allowed, what attributes uh, can be used, what are the limitation on number of child elements, uh, if, if there is need to use some specific data type for elements, right? So all these details are present in a schema for XML. So by validating this XML against the schema, you can ensure if it is meeting the constraint or not. And if it is not meeting the constraint, you can anyway reject that data, right? So this helps in maintaining the integrity of the data which we are working with. And that is why XML is still preferred in the areas where data security and data integrity is on top priority, okay? Now, if you talk about handling the complex structure or a complex data, XML has a better ability to do that by because it has an ability to define a structure, to use a schema, and to use complex tags, right? Also, uh, you, you have already seen in the example, you can add comments, you can add attributes explaining uh, your data as well, right? So that is why uh, we can say uh, it has a better ability to handle complex structure as compared to uh, JSON. Now examples for applications of JSON, okay? So what are the areas where we can use JSON? So, uh, for example, in case of mobile applications or web applications, since JSON is a lightweight and it is faster to process or faster to transfer as well, it is popular choice for mobile and web applications where bandwidth and processing power is still limited, right? Also, in case of real-time applications, for example, in case of chat applications, in, in case of online gamings that requires the uh, low latency and fast response, JSON is a preferred format, okay? If you talk about the application areas for XML, then we have e-commerce application. For example, uh, in e-commerce applications, we need to exchange the data such as product catalogs or order management systems, right? So in that case, uh, XML is more flexible and it provides an extensible way to represent these informations, okay? So we can um, add as many tags as possible. Now, uh, XML is widely used as a configuration files as well, right? So, for example, to store the information or we can say a configuration information for software applications, XML is usually preferred because it has an ability to store data in structured and a hierarchical manner, okay? 
so let's say if you are working in salesforce right and if you have worked in lightning web components you can see we have a configuration file over there right that is nothing but an uh, xml file right so where we store the target elements we specify the versions and all those things right also if you have worked with deployments uh, if you have prepared the package file where we specify which classes to deploy or which elements to be deployed right so that is also an xml format only correct so XML is widely used in configuration files also. So this is it for XML and JSON in this video. Whereas in next video, we will be discussing how we can convert our JSON into an Apex, how we can validate our JSON and how we can handle the incoming request, right? In next videos, we'll also see how we can handle the XML data, the incoming XML data from the APIs and how we can pass it into uh, Salesforce map so that we can easily use in our Apex coding. Okay. So thank you for watching this video. Do not forget to subscribe this channel.